Hey guys, in this session we will talk about how to debug and many tricks about debugging. Uh, we will focus about one tool particularly. Uh, it's called GDB and it's an open source tool that you can use it in any Linux machine. By default, uh, GDB is installed in most of the, dist most of the dist distributions, uh, but still you might have to install it. So, what's the motivation of this seminar? So, you might have experienced that debugging it might be the really worst parts of coding. Uh, I think that we all have that image of uh, coding at 3 a.m. and debugging, and you need to submit maybe by next morning, and you keep debugging, getting stressed, things doesn't work. So, it's somehow good to know some tools to ease that situation. And that's what I'm gonna explain to you in this seminar. So I found at the beginning of my career that debugging was something I really hated. But over time, as I learned how to correctly use uh, debuggers, I got to find uh, something fun because it's like a, maybe like a crime that you need to actually find hints about what's happened and you need to find which variable is guilty of the mess. <laughs> so I totally encourage you to to learn more about it. And as I always say, all this kind of thing that you learn will actually reduce the time that you spend working in your project, which is always good. So. The scope of this uh, seminar, uh, it goes, it's mostly GDB, as you can see, from one to six points. And after that, uh, there's some little extra parts about some other tools that we already cover, uh, just one. And in the eighth part, I just talk about some, some way of you code and why you code, you prevent some bugs to happen. So yeah, it's mostly about GDB. So let's get started. This is like a mini tutorial for GDB. So how to invoke, how to execute GDB. So GDB is just a comment you can see in here where you specify uh, the name of the binary. So the square brackets, it means that it's optional argument. So if you want to use visual GDB that we're gonna um, I assign a session for this part, uh, you have to write this option, otherwise you don't. And very important parts, GDB, uh, if you want to use your binary with GDB, you need to uh, generate the debug section. So normally you use this G, but you can actually add more, how can I say, more information to for the debugging section. And then you can use G3, as I remember, or GGDB. I'm not quite sure what's the, that was the difference among them, but it's possible. You can check it out if you're interested in that. So as always, I have an example. So I had this folder and I had this main file. And so uh, yeah, I have a couple of functions. Yeah, it's pretty trivial. Nothing nothing interesting here. And if I want to uh, debug the thing with GDB, I will I'm using C at this moment, so G and then main. And yeah. Now I have my, I had before because I did some test, but I have this this one. And then now I can launch GDB with that. So so yeah, that's it. That, that's very much how to invoke. And now we are inside the GDB uh, terminal, the GDB shell. So, <clears throat> so what are the basic comments? So maybe that's very important thing if you have no idea. Uh, so the very first comment, it's a uh, run.
basic commands of GDB. So those are the commands that you will normally need to use. And only restricting yourself to those commands will be able to debug correctly. So let's get started. Uh, let's open two windows. This one here, this one here. Well, so this is one, run. You just run your uh, program from the main function, uh, same as normal. So one important part here, you don't really have to write run. If you write R, it also works. It's the same thing. So that's how I explain this. So it's, it's the convention in computer science. The square brackets are optional things, so that's it. So yeah, if you run, it's fine, but it's nothing useful there, right? So let's, so how can we uh, make something useful? How can we go line by line, line by line, which is the normal thing that you do in a, in a debugger? So we set up a breakpoint, and a very good start is to set up a breakpoint in the main function. So we set it. So now, if we uh, if we press break, sorry, uh, info break, we got that uh, in the main function we had a breakpoint. It's a good information. And now, if we press run, we are now in main. There is one function I forgot to write in the presentation that's important. It's the list. So it shows you the source code where you are. So at this moment, we are in 15, sorry, 17 line. We are about to execute the 17 line. And we break because we set up the breakpoint there. And then we press run, and then we run until the breakpoint. So now that we are here, we might want to get inside this function. And to do that, we have this step. Now we are inside function one, uh, this one. And once again, this function one is about to execute this instruction. So we can again step like that. So now if we want to go to next line, we press next, which symbolize that we are returning. So we go into previous function, and now we're in function one. And then, oh yeah, the end, end means next. So just end, as I explained before. So next, we are returning from function one. Now we are in main. Next, return zero, next, finish program. Easy. Uh, one interesting part, uh, it's print. So you can print the variable value. And that's why, I mean, that's important. <laughs> that's very important, right? So if we rerun, and then we go to function one, and then we run this one, we can print the value of uh, C. And print has some options, like a string, decimal number, hexadecimal. So yeah. You can you can get information by run help print. Then it shows you some information. So and then the last comment is not super needed. I mean it's not essential, but it's helpful, especially in, in large functions. So let's rerun. We step in into the function one one more time. And then we just very quickly want to get uh, finish this function. It stop by the time that we finish the function. So fin, here we are. So we return from function one and we are in main. So it's it's very useful when you have a very large function and you just want to uh, go over that and not stop, not go instruction by instruction. So yeah, those ones are the basic comments. Uh, you can just read this part and quit the, the seminar it's it's good enough 
but GDB offers you way way much than that. And next part, it's the visual mode. So as you have seen, we normally use list to see what's going on at uh, the source code, but GDB has a very nice feature that we cover in our first seminar. And this feature, it's called GDB visual mode terminal UI. And so the difference is that uh, instead of calling GDB, invoking GDB like this, we invoke GDB like this. And here we are. So there are many comments. And maybe we can focus on the source code. We can see everything here or focus. Sorry. Uh, also, if I press Control X O, it's the same thing. Focus one or the other one. And <clears throat> so we can do the same thing. We can set a breakpoint on main. And then maybe a breakpoint in line 19. It works as well. Uh, one more thing I forgot to say. Uh, you can set breakpoints in different files. So in my case, I only have one file. So I can do like this, maybe 18. And then if I do info breaks, break, I got this thing, right? So it's good to know. And you can, uh, no matter to say, you can break in functions as well, as I said before. So if I break in function one, yeah, I get this, this thing uh, and wonder how it looks like. Okay, yes, it's always line internally, but anyways. So yeah, we can run. And then we are in function one, we get this one here that indicates that we are here and then we can step in and now we are here and then we can step in one more time and next, next, finish, uh, next. It's good. Uh, so I'm going to delete all the breakpoints by using delete and I'm going to set at a breakpoint. Uh, I'm going to delete one more time. Refresh, maybe. Info break. Well, uh, I don't know what's, what's. So if I set up a breakpoint in main and a breakpoint in 19, I can, I, and I run. Now I'm in 17 line about to execute. And I want to stop in the, in the line 19, but I don't want to go next, next, next. So I can just press continue or see. And yeah, here I am. So it's a good thing if you have breakpoints quite far. So yeah, it's it's great thing. And if you have multiple files, you're gonna get the source code of the multiple files. So it's it's a nice tool, and there is no reason not to use it. It's uh, distributed in I think all the recent uh, GDB installation. So in most of the university servers, you're gonna find this uh, terminal UI, UI. So yeah, let's keep going. What about frames? So this part, it's related to, uh, let's say computer architecture, in the sense that uh, you need to know a little bit how it works, the stack. So if you have taken computer architecture or similar courses, you might know that uh, whenever we go inside one function, we need to save the context of the function. And the, uh, it's called the frame as well. So, and then as you go deeper inside, you have this tag where you keep in adding those contexts. So GDB has many functions to let you analyze that thing. And it's normally very useful, especially when you have a, some error inside a very deep function. So let's, let's, let's see an example. So let's call this one. So we're breaking main and we run 
and we get in. Uh, no, let's let's break on line seven, and then we run, and then now we are in line seven. So first thing, we can see the back trace, which is the list of con frames that we save. So we had this sum two, the current function, the function which call this sum two, and the other function which call function one. So it's a frame, and it's good. Uh, I mean, if it is a very deep code, then it's an important uh, information. But the good thing about this one is that we can go up and down, right? So we just came from what we call, and then if we go up, yes, yeah, go. So it's important to say that uh, it doesn't change the program counter, the PC register, or I mean, it's emulated in the in this GDB. So it just changed the frame. Sorry, a PC counter is changed because of the frame. And so yeah, if I press next, I'm still here. Sorry, PC counter was not changed. I was right. So it's it's very useful. It's very very useful. GDB terminal, uh, the outputs, it's quite uh, descriptive. So yeah, that's it for the frame and the stack. And one thing very important to say is that for exceptions, it doesn't really work that well. So the reason is not a debugger. The reason is how exceptions work. So it follow a different path. And yeah, it's in GDB, it can be very misleading. And also cementation faults and that kind of thing also maybe will not give you a backtrace, which is correct. It might point you out nearby where it happens, but since that thing happened from the operating system, I mean the kernel, uh, so it's, it's kind of, uh, yeah, yeah, you don't get the exact one. So it's not perfect, I I should say. For that kind of thing, maybe Bell Green or different tool will be more suitable. So yeah, let's continue with our tutorial. Watch points. So watch points are something else. So somehow it's a utility to kind of like a um, higher level. So you have a variable, which is a memory address, which uh, you can check when the its value has been changed. It means like uh, when someone has, I mean, it's uh, someone has written to the that variable or when that variable has been read. So GDB allows both of them. And there is one important distinction so we have hardware and software watch points. Uh, the main difference is that hardware are faster, way faster, while software are way slower. It will slow down the execution of your program. But the hardware ones are rarely supported and they are limited by few amount of registers. So yeah, don't count on the hardware ones. Uh, one thing important to say about all of this is that whenever you run in GDB, your program will be many times slower than the it usually speed. But normally it's not a problem when you are debugging. So watch the syntax is uh, watch and R watch or A watch and the variable name or also a condition to happen. Another important thing about watch is that uh, it will only watch it if you are in the same frame of the variable. So if I am in this inside this function and then see, so yeah, maybe I can do an example. So I rerun and then next, next. And now I want, oh, uh, well, delete, break main. So if I go inside this function and now I want to watch, see, maybe 
Ah, uh, watch. Sí. Oh, I got the hardware one. <laughs> That's good. And then now uh, a step in. So we say that, uh, yeah, we're here. Next, next. So now it's a old value zero, new value three, automatically. And then if I go to next, it's a, oh, there has been read or write or write to the watch point four, see? With the value of this one. So it indicates that this one have read the variable. And yeah, it's it's great. So you can make conditions to happen. Uh, well, I, I I forgot the syntax. It was a little bit strange, but you can check it out out, out there. So the idea is that maybe um, conditions are useful when you want to keep some invariant, for example. Like uh, maybe you had this variable that you never wanted to be negative. Because you know if it gets negative, then there's going to be a crash or something bad. So you can set a watch points with that. And then if nothing happens, you can notify. And the, the execution will stop. So it's very smart way of debug. Instead of always going next print, next print, next print, right? You automatize, which is always my main rule. Automatize everything. Uh, I should admit that I rarely use them due to the limitation that uh, I have to be within the same frame. And that's normally a problem because, yeah, the variables I want to watch, they're normally in a different frame. So for like that kind of software, that kind of functions that they run some kind of mathematical code or something like that with many iterations, it's, it worked out well, but with different kind of code, which is most like spaghetti code, <laughs> then it's not that great, I would say. And yeah, so next part, it's a reverse walking. That's how I call it. I just found it interesting. <laughs> so you can actually walk reversely with GDB. So the idea is that we always go forward, like next line, next line, next line, next line. Right? Like from here, we go to this one, this one, we go to this one, this one finish, then go this one and then this one. But there is a way that we can go back. So if I was here, I can come back to this line and I come back to the other one and come back. And obviously there is many good things. If you set watch points and then if you set things, of course. So I'll give you an example. So we are in line, uh, okay. Before, first of all, we are in main, and now we need to record. So we need to press record. Uh, sorry, here's the... Because if we don't press record, then it's not enabled. So once we press record, we can get inside anything. We can put a big point somewhere, maybe on 18. And then we can go to 18. As you have seen, it takes some time, right? <laughs> slow, very slow. And yeah, that's a reason for that. It's keeping track of everything. Even for this very trivial call, it took wait, one second and a half or two seconds. So, but it's great. Look at what, we can do this now. Right? And now we can go inside and then next, and then we can do our next. So it's cool, we can go forward and back, forward and back. And you can do, so if you wanna go a little bit more crazy, okay, let's get more, more deep inside. Uh, next, next, next. So now we can do like this, set execution direction, reverse. Now, if I do next, I go back. <laughs> and if I do like a, a reverse step, it's the other way around. Ah, sorry. I doesn't work like this. I need to say the direction. 
anyways, you got the point. And it's it's quite useful. Uh, actually, I didn't know about this feature until maybe a year ago. And it really helped me with some of my assignments about implementing uh, B plus three, uh, which it was very crazy. One of those assignments that it's, you always remember because it was, it was tough. You have to serialize and deserialize and uh, keeping the pointers, serializing, it was, it was not an easy thing. And this thing actually really helped me. Uh, but as I said before, it's very slow uh, and you might not be able to use it in large scale software or use it very badly. I'm not sure about the uh, memory consumption of this uh, thing, but probably it's pretty high. So something to know about this. And yeah, so let me check the time. 10 minutes, okay, that's, that, that's good. So one more thing. As everything in my presentation, we always have plugins and dot files. It's it, it's good. I mean, uh, that's a good thing about Unix somehow. I'm not sure if all of the Unix software has, has it, but something that you will see most of the time is that, that you can extend it and customize it. So in my case, I use the following customiz customizations. So it's my dot file for the GDB. Uh, as I, I should say, that it's not mine. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, those guys, they actually beat it. And it's very long file for Southern Lines. Uh, these ones are mine. <laughs> But other than that, I didn't customize it. But they made such a great job. So this one is a um, pearl. I'm gonna pearl. And I don't. Yeah, it's pearl. Mix it with the uh, GDB commands. So it's really nice. I had this option at first that I just set up, and then it does all the magic inside. So. But yeah, that's how I like it. That's uh, uh, yeah, that that quite often. So until here. So I highly encourage you to at least set up these two options. It sounds stupid, but uh, and this one as well. So. These two options, what what they do, it's uh, they let you print out a uh, array in a kind of beautiful manner. They make some kind of tree so you can see it well. And also uh, for the objects, if you print a structure, it also shows in a very nice manner. One more option, very important, is the save history. I I didn't know about this one before, but. Many times when I end up my GDB sessions and I reopen, I have to remember rewrite this very long comment to find some the value of some variable very deep inside of breakpoints. And with the history, you just search backward. And that's really great thing. And the other thing I want to say, and that's why I want to encourage you to download this dot, dot file is that in this dot file, it's, it has some uh, functions to display um, standard containers from the C++ standard library in a nice manner. So, okay, let's, let's give an example. So session five, we, okay, our main function, we just change it. So first thing, a string a, and then a equal to low wall. Uh, I'm writing like this because I want to have two lines for GDP. And now I have a map, my map, and the map map integers to strings. It's almost like an array, <laughs> not string, string. And then I insert 
and it's equal to no and 40 is totally nonsense code but i just want to show some things and uh, maybe maybe that's it maybe that's good you know let's include the map and then i recompile and then i uh gdb session so i set a breakpoint on 25 i go there so i can print a i get hello world so it's good it's a similar to a stream but it can figure it out by itself so you don't have to go inside the method and for my map let's look how it looks like it's great right you don't have to then i mean it's directly gives you what's inside so by default gdb doesn't do that and uh, so you have no idea what's inside my map but with these extensions you can see it and that applies for vectors list uh most of the data structures within the standard library and in your case if you have a uh, your own data structure you might want to use it as well so that i mean you spend so maybe it takes you 10 minutes to write that extension for gdb but if you write it, how many minutes will you save debugging so that's always the question so sometimes automatizing it sounds like a silly thing that you just waste waste your time but in reality you're saving your time by not doing mechanical things because actually and at the same time mechanical things doesn't uh, give you anything good to you so so that's that's my suggestion so uh that's the end of the gdb part we have gone through the basics visual mode the frames the watch points reverse walking and extensions so gdb uh it gives you runtime errors right it's how it helps you but memory management is not something that it gives to you i mean it, you don't get any information about the memory management and there are many tools i would well, not that many but there are some tools in linux that actually help you with that part and they're normally very easy to use it's not uh while for gdb we had to learn at least maybe six or eight comments to know how to use them somehow okay for these other ones are quite simple so let's start with bugging. So at this moment, if I run bugging, I wouldn't have any problem because I'm not using dynamic memory. Yeah, it's a, like a, there was five allocation, maybe inside the string or map and five frees. So everything is good. But if I modify my code, and now the string is a pointer string new string right and i don't want to initialize it i don't want to free it after let's see what happened But yeah, now we have a leak summary, and then we say like uh, we lost eight bytes in one block, and definitely and indirectly we lost all the ones. So we allocated six times, and there was only four frees. So yeah, something happened. Probably the first allocation, there were those two allocations uh, for that uh, new. Probably the first one was actually the new itself. And then inside our stream, we have another array of character. That's why the two of them. So it's really good. It gives you this information. So if we rerun with this one, we get something else. We actually get what did it happen. So 
we get that uh, in the new operator, in the main 18, it's it's pretty good information. We had the that thing happen. That that new that we run there, it's uh, it's the one that uh, it create the memory leak. So there is an option. I'm not sure if it has in this version. I guess like a uh, out of the topic somehow, but uh. Uh, well, there are many options, as you might see. Yeah, yeah. activates DDB. Well, maybe it's out of the topic too much and. I had to set up something, so yeah, maybe we can ignore. So I so yeah, that that's for the bug green. So it's very easy tool. Uh, totally recommended. You don't really have to learn anything. Maybe this leak check full, but it always reminds you, so you don't really have to memorize it. And there is so now they. I mean, recently. CLang and GCC very m much more recently, they start to include this uh, memory uh, memory debugger, let's call, uh, in their compilers. So it's uh, such an interesting idea. After you compile, if you pass an option, it's run this test. So by the time that you compile, you can check whether you have any memory leak, but I should say something about all of this is that uh, if I, and that's an important thing that we shouldn't miss it, if there was a condition here that it's false in my case, I mentioned that there was a condition there, that it happens sometimes. Right? And then when we run our our bug green in this one, bug green doesn't go through this part of the code in their own execution. But sometimes this call is executed if the I don't know if the user enables an option or if something happens. So bug green will not be able to find this error. It will tell you that uh, it's everything perfect with your code. So you might miss uh, some some possible memory leaks. So this one is very uh, related to the test coverage. When you make a unit test, you need to ch test not only that your function is working, but it's working in all the possible scenario. So yeah, that's something to have in mind. So maybe you need to run bug green a few times with, with different options. Then you can have a total, complete coverage. So yeah, that's uh, that's for this part. And then next part. Sometimes you don't even need a debugger. And sometimes you can prevent things. And so how can you do it? So many times you can just use an assertion. So assertion is something that's, uh, I'll give you an example. Examples are easy to understand. So you can assert that uh, A, it's bigger than zero, and B, it's bigger than zero. So it really looks like a precondition, right? And it's really is like that. So you want to make sure that these two values are bigger than zero. If if nothing doesn't happen, you want to cancel the execution of your program. So if you had the habit of always adding this thing, then I mean you will not need to debug because you're gonna get this error that uh, this precondition was not fulfilled. And the important part here is that if we debug, okay, let's say, let's put a minus one here. And then we recompile. 
Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh, I need to add the header file for asserts. So yeah, we got this. Uh, uh, that they fails our assertion. So it's great. We didn't have to open GDB. We just in our own call itself, it debugged by itself. And the other part is the debug macro. So in many calls, you might see something like this. Oh, it's the other way around to handle this part. Uh, this is too much. <laughs> uh, I need to change this one. So, so for everyone who took this kind of mathematics, we apply Morgan's law. So we change, we negate, and then we change or or R and sorry, or and for. Yeah. So we don't need a zero. Yeah, zero was fine. So so yeah, that's it. And we compile. Execute. Now it looks fine, but so this idea is that this one is not runtime, it's uh Population time, so you need to add this debug, and then you get this. So you can pass to your source code. I mean, you you pass to the compiler, and the compiler then pass to the source code. Very uh, constant. So in this way, you can enable part of the code. And yeah, I have to do the next seats. Minus one. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, standard library. Yeah. So now I try same as the assertion. So both of them are fine. It depends what you're looking for. But the main idea here, the key point is that uh, even inside your source code, you can actually debug things. So this is the end of this session. Uh, I hope that you got to know some things about GDB, bug green, and uh, how to use this assert and debug macro. So please, if you have any questions or suggestions, uh, write a comment or contact me. As I said, uh, I'm a student. Uh, I'm not an expert, and I just want to show what I know as a user of these tools, and I'll see you next time.